Corruption. This episode of Profiles in Corruption focuses on a stalwart enemy of Terminalmits, whose political corruption has been chronicled in past episodes of the No Uncertain Terms podcast. But new allegations of sexual sleaze and perhaps even assaults are throwing further light on the character of Lee Chatfield, Speaker of the Michigan State House from 2018 to 2020. Michigan State Police and the Lansing Police Department are investigating claims that Speaker Chatfield sexually assaulted his former student and current sister-in-law, Rebecca Chatfield, for over a decade. The sexual assaults allegedly began when she was a 15 or 16-year-old student at Northern Michigan Christian Academy, where Lee Chatfield was a teacher and soccer coach, and continued through his political career and his speakership, ending only in 2021 when she decided to go to the police at age 26. In her criminal complaint, Rebecca alleges at least one of the sexual assaults occurred in Lee's Capitol office. In Michigan, the age of sexual consent is 16, but Michigan law makes it a crime for a teacher to have sex with a student under age 18. In his, um, I guess you could call it a defense, Lee Chatfield's lawyer said that the affairs were strictly consensual. They occurred when Rebecca and Lee were both adults, and besides, Chatfield had multiple extramarital affairs during the same period. Yes, Speaker Chatfield was and is married. Lee's younger brother, Aaron Chatfield, who Rebecca married when she was 19, says he was unaware of any sexual relationship between his wife and his brother, consensual or otherwise. But Aaron says he had suspicions. He knew his brother. Both Aaron and another Chatfield brother, Paul, had secured jobs at the Capitol while his brother was climbing the political ladder. They resigned as Lee took the speakership to avoid any appearance of conflict of interest. But Aaron stayed in town and took a job for Grand River Strategies, a political consulting firm contracted to help run the House Republican Campaign Committee. But, but his real responsibility was to act as a personal driver for his brother Lee. Aaron says Speaker Chatfield would request rides at all times of the night. Aaron told the Michigan-based Bridge publication that the duo made regular trips to meet up with women in Ritzy, Birmingham, frequented the Legends Strip Club in Detroit, and would stay at expensive places like Detroit's Shinola Hotel. It's probably worth noting that Lee paid Aaron nearly $20,000 for his periodic work with his political committees as well. During this same period, as Lee Chatfield was Speaker of the Michigan House, in between his alleged rapes and or liaisons, he launched an effort to weaken the legislative tournaments law approved by voters by 59% in 1992. Polling in 2019 showed that the popularity of term limits had only grown over time, with 69% in support today. No matter, he teamed up with Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky and was floating ideas and organizing other political players and groups in town to undermine the popular law. Simultaneously, a group of lobbyists, mostly former legislators, filed suit against the term limits law in court. Coincidence? <laughs> sure. Alarmed, citizens assembled and brought the scheme to the public's attention. A group called Don't Touch Turn Limits appeared and started driving an 18-foot pink pig statue from city to city across the state to raise awareness, and there was an outcry. In the end, the politicians relented, the lawsuit failed spectacularly, and Speaker Lee Chatfield was term limited, out of office, on schedule. All of his growing power and his growing hubris had met its match. But if it wasn't for the term limits law, he'd still be there. there.